So as we continue to look through the piano roll, let's jump right into the note color. And this is another note property, just double click and we can just change that color. This will edit the MIDI channel that is going to be played out. So that can make a difference for a number of plugins. And it also makes a difference for having slide notes. So if I have these sliding and I want to have another note sliding another direction, I couldn't do that all with the same color because if I place another note of that color with a slide, it will also slide up. However, if I select a different color, I'll do five so it's a little bit easier to see. I can trigger that, make a slide note going the other way, and then I have all of these notes, which are pretty random, going in different directions. And I'll select all of them and make them a little longer so we can really pick out what's happening. Which is kind of silly sounding. But since we have a few long notes, we can see some other possibilities. If I hold the right shift key and click and drag, I can slice notes along a vertical line. And this is helpful because then I have all of those notes trimmed to the same size. I just hit delete to remove the ones that were cut off. But obviously I'll hit control Z and I could just move those if I wanted to have a second note playing. It basically just separated the two. So I'll highlight and delete them. You can also hold shift and drag this. And since they all end at the exact same time, they'll all move together when you're holding shift, which can be helpful if you're programming a number of different chords and you want to change their lengths, but you don't want to select each one every time to change a length, which can be annoying in certain situations. And you can slice a number of different notes a number of different ways. And then you might want to change a length. And then you have a bunch of notes moving around, which is nice. And say you wanted to copy them, you could highlight a selection, hold shift, click and drag, and then you made a copy. And you could alternatively just highlight, press control C and then control V to make a copy as well. But that depends what you want to do. Having all these notes together, you can kind of see a thing happening here that when you change a velocity, it changes all of them. But if you want to change just some velocities, highlight the notes you want to change, and then you can change it for them, and you'll see the difference happening, or whatever other control you have selected down here. And another nice little keyboard shortcut to know is Control B, and what that will do is copy every note you have and then place it right up against wherever your last note ends. So if I hit Control B, I'll have that same measure copied again since I stop exactly at the end of two. But that's something you may want to keep an eye on since if you have it stop at any other time, you might have a weird rhythm happening, but it would be easy enough to move it in that situation. Another thing to mention is obviously we're snapped to the grid right now, like we were in the step sequencer, but since this is the piano roll, we don't have to be snapped to the grid. We can hold Alt to bypass whatever snap settings we have, and those snap settings are set up top here, so line is probably the most common and what you want to stick with a lot of the time, but if you have none on, you are not snapped to the grid. And sometimes the thing that happens is you might hit backspace and that will automatically switch between none and line. So if you're all of a sudden not linked and you get confused, you may have just hit backspace by accident. And what you can do here is highlight the note, hit control Q, and it will line up. And that's called quantizing, which we'll see more of later. Or alternatively, you could just select it and delete and put it on again, however you want to do it. But the piano roll also has quite a lot of little tools that you can go through, both as far as for putting in notes, you can paint them in instead, and then you can just click and drag to add a bunch of them. You can do a bunch of other things, and we won't go through every tool because the main ones that we've seen cover most things. I usually just use the pencil tool and use keyboard shortcuts to slice notes where I want them or delete notes. I can mute notes with this tool, but you can also just double right click and drag over a note to mute it as well. So it's just a matter of keeping things in check like that. The slice button, instead of holding right shift and dragging over something, I can select that tool to slice, but it tends to be a little bit easier to just keep your tool and be able to slice it by holding the right shift key and clicking over it, however you might want to do so. 
But again, if you want to see any of these tools, you can hover over it to see what it is and look in the hint panel to look at its exact usage. There are also a few other useful things up next to the tools here. And we'll look at a few of those. You can adjust the snap here for the piano roll. As opposed to the main snap, you can have the snap enabled at different divisions of tempo or none cell line for the piano roll only if you want that to be different than your main snap. But I'll leave it on main and just call it good. And there's, of course, plenty of other things. You can stamp chords on here, which is kind of nice. And that gives you a grouped stack of notes in that chord. And grouping is just holding shift and pressing G over a selection of notes. And sometimes groups and stamped chords are helpful just to be able to treat all those notes as one entity. It's just an option you have. There's also a bunch of tools that you can quickly access from this little tools drop down. Again, quite a few possibilities, which might be a little bit more in depth than we need to go right here, but a good thing to explore. And there's plenty available in the menu here as well to see all these different things. You can change the target channel here as well, like you did on the top or the target control on the bottom, same deal. And you can also do a few other things. You can change the view, adjust how you see it. And something I like to do also is allow resizing notes from the left, which is off by default. But I like to be able to scale them from either way, just so the option is there. But as for functional knowledge of the piano roll, that is a pretty good look at everything that is available. Again, like I said, a few things might be a little bit out of scope of this particular series, but if you do want to go more in depth, there is another series available on Groove 3 on just the topic of the piano roll. We've worked through pretty well, though, and now we're going to go ahead and get into creating patterns with all this sort of info that we've gone through, working with notes or any sort of triggering data for samples or instruments or whatever channels we may have. And we'll get into that in the next video, so I will see you then.